The original Xbox was designed to be the ultimate gaming device. Its goal was to take PC quality games out of the bedroom and into the living room onto the big screen. Taking advantage of the most up-to-date features at the time, such as an optimized Windows 2000 kernel, a custom DirectX 8 implementation, support for high resolutions, DVD media and hard disk storage, and of course, built-in networking. During the first few months after launch in 2001, there was an aura of mystery about the console. The stories about how it was just a PC with a custom kernel and you could take any executable file from a PC, rename the file extension from .exe to .xbe and run it on an Xbox turned out to be false. While the Xbox was x86 based and used DirectX code, it still needed to be compiled for the Xbox as the target device. Some users were lucky enough to own debug or development kits, which meant they could easily write code to target the Xbox and have the luxury of a debugger and other tools to help. Other users like me had to resort to retail Xboxes with a mod chip. Typically code would be developed for and compiled on a PC, then the XBE copied across via FTP and tested. Back in those days, there was no home button you could press to get back to your dashboard. A hard reset was your only option. Later, some mod chip manufacturers had in-game reset or IGR, where holding down a certain combination of buttons would reset the Xbox for you. Writing code on a retail Xbox sucked. The majority of time you spent was taken up trying to figure out why your code crashed and what your next move was. A few years after the release of the Xbox, I got my hands on a debug kit. As it turns out, a retail and a debug motherboard have no differences at all except for the extra 64 megabytes of RAM chips, and I always wondered if there was a way to convert a retail Xbox into a development kit. When Linux was released for the original Xbox, there were two options to run it. The first was to flash a BIOS, known as Cromwell, onto the TSOP or mod chip. Cromwell was a replacement firmware for the Xbox that contained no Microsoft code at all, and its main purpose was to allow the system to boot into a Linux environment. This was the traditional way of running Linux, but the problem with this is, once Cromwell was flashed, you lose the ability to run Xbox games, including Homebrew. The second method was to boot the system into a Linux kernel from the Xbox dashboard like Unleash X. This meant you could boot into a live CD such as Gen 2, and you could simply get back to your Xbox system by restarting the console. The functionality to reboot into a new kernel was the basis of what was known as the Phoenix BIOS Loader or PBL. This program allows the system to boot into another Xbox BIOS known as BFM or Bootable From Media. This meant you had the ability to try a new BIOS before flashing it to your TSOP or mod chip. It also meant you could use a debug BIOS and convert your retail Xbox into a development kit. We're going to go ahead and convert a retail Xbox into a debug Xbox. And we're going to utilize the same concepts that we learned with the Phoenix BIOS loader to boot into a debug BIOS and a debug dashboard. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how it's done. So in order to convert our retail Xbox into a development kit, we will need the following tools. A modded Xbox, either soft modded or TSOP or mod chipped. A copy of a debug Xbox BIOS. You can find these from Xbins and the one that I recommend you use is the Complex Debug 4627BFM or Boot From Media BIOS. We will also need a copy of the Phoenix BIOS loader to be able to boot into our Complex Debug BFM BIOS. And because a debug or development Xbox has a completely different dashboard compared to a retail Xbox, you will need to locate a copy of the debug dashboard files to replace the retail dashboard. While I can't link one, if you Google search on XDK 4627 debug dash, it should be pretty easy to track one down. Optionally, if you want to do anything useful with a debug kit, you will need a copy of Microsoft Visual Studio 2003 and a copy of the Microsoft XDK installer. For this portion, I recommend setting up a Windows XP virtual machine so you can boot to your Xbox development environment anytime you want and keep it isolated from your main operating system. Okay, so you have all these things and you are ready to proceed. Let's go ahead and get started. 
The Xbox has two main partitions, the C partition, which contains all the dashboard and system files, and the E partition, which contains utility files. On a dev kit, this is where you'll be doing most of your development. First things first, we need to take a backup of our C partition, just in case we mess something up and we need to recover. So load up your dashboard, and for this I'm using Unleash X, and create a backup folder and copy the contents of your C partition into this folder. Next, extract the contents of the debug dashboard files onto a folder on your PC. You will see two folders called C and E. And then, let's go ahead and extract the Phoenix BIOS loader into a separate folder on your PC. I'm using the latest Me2 edition, and I'll link it in the comments below. Once you've extracted it, copy the debug BIOS BFM file into the same folder. Now what you want to do is open the boot.cfg file in Notepad and change the line that says ROM file to reference the debug BIOS that you downloaded. Mine is called complex underscore 4627debug.bin. Now go ahead and rename this and save and quit out of Notepad. Now going back to your debug dashboard extracted folder, FTP the contents of the C partition to the C partition on the Xbox, except for the file xbox-.xbe. Now do the same thing for the E partition. Finally, copy the contents of the backup of C that we took earlier into E colon devkit samples evox. This means that we can boot into Unleash X while we are in our debug environment, if we ever needed to. Then go back into the Phoenix BIOS loader file and copy the files default.xbe, boot.cfg and the debug BIOS into the root of the E partition. In File Manager, launch default.xbe from the E partition. With any luck, it should boot into the new BIOS and you'll see the debug dashboard. You will know that it's currently booted into a bootable from Media BIOS at any time as your LED color will be orange instead of green. From here, if you are using an advanced HD cable, you can select your screen resolution to be 720p. I prefer this for extra clarity. It's also important to give your debug environment a machine name. This will be needed for connecting it to a PC. And just to make sure everything is working as we intended, let's try out the Dolphin Classic demo. One neat trick we can do is add a new entry in Unleash X for a quick shortcut to boot to the debug dash anytime you like. Open up the config.xml file in the Unleash X folder and add the entry to boot to the debug dashboard from there. Save, FTP the file back to the folder, reboot your Xbox and you will see a new entry for your debug dashboard. From here you can boot into the debug dashboard as many times as you like. Turning off your Xbox will revert you back to a retail system. A lot of people ask me, you know, why was the Xbox scene so good as far as innovation? Why was there so much development going on and so many different things coming out for it? You know, emulators, homebrew, media players, utilities, tools, all sorts of different things going on. The ability to convert a retail system into a debug system meant more developers embraced the original Xbox and were able to do real development and real debugging and real coding on an environment that was very easy and friendly to use and that in turn really brought out a lot of innovation for that particular scene. So now that we have our debug environment working, if you want to do anything useful with it or write some code, as mentioned, you will need to install Visual Studio 2003 and a copy of the Microsoft XDK installer. Both of these can be found by Googling, but I can't link them on this video myself. Once you've installed Visual Studio 2003 and the XDK, a new icon known as Xbox Neighborhood will be added to your desktop. This is a simple wizard to connect your debug Xbox to the network. If you add the machine name or IP address, it will detect your Xbox assuming you're on the network and add it. From here, you can now click on the partitions that it has available. You can run code or XBEs directly from here. You can also take screenshots of what's in the Xbox frame buffer and do some other cool stuff. Taking things one step further, Visual Studio 2003 integrates the Microsoft XDK and provides the compiler and libraries needed to build Xbox executables or XBEs. When you use this coupled with the debug kit, your executables are automatically transferred over to the Xbox and can be tested and debugged remotely. 
And this method that I'm showing you was the method that both professional development studios utilized as well as homebrew developers back in the original Xbox days. And if you do have a software development background or are interested in console development or just have a glancing interest at doing something like this, go ahead and check out this modification. It's very easy to set up, very painless, and who knows, you may end up writing some new homebrew for the original Xbox. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, let me know in the comments below your thoughts. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.